Hi everyone, Emma here. I have a lovely somewhat tutorial to show you. Um, I've made these before in another video. and uh, This is the bracelet and there's the closure. So this is called the Goddess Bracelet and we also made some earrings to go with it. So I'm going to go ahead and show you a different colorway. So you know, I, if you've seen the other video, you've seen how to make this strand to create the loops to put your pearls in. And uh, so it's basically a bit of review. So I will make one tiny little one to do the earrings with. And then we'll go ahead and put the earrings together and we'll put the bracelet together. So for the bracelet, you're going to need 30 of these loops. Um, so it looks like this. And this makes this size bracelet, which is a seven and a half inch bracelet. And we're going to use these beautiful uh, color pearls, the light blue and the cobalt blue. So we'll put these aside for now. And I did grab some 15 uh, silver seed beads because in this video I talked about how you can see the thread. So I think for this one we might try and put some 15 O's here and see how it looks um, just so you can't see the thread. But again, you may not see this thread anyway if it's in somebody's ear. If you're that close, I think maybe you're too close to the person, but we'll try it anyway. That was a really great suggestion that somebody gave me, so we'll put this aside as well. And so, yeah, we're going to make one of these to start with. I'll we'll set that aside. I have some findings here for the bracelet and the earrings. Just set that aside as well. And that's what we're going to make. We're going to put some... So this is, once you figure out this pattern, it's super simple to do. So let's enlarge this. And I'm using six pound smoke fire line. And I, for the earrings, because it only requires three of these loops, I maybe have half a wingspan and not very much. So let's go ahead. For the first loop, you're going to pick up 14 11 o seed beads. Okay. Oh, and I didn't, um, I think in the original video they use a stop bead, but I am going to do a knot right away and hide the knot. Then we don't have to weave it back in. So we have a little bit left at the end. We are going to, I'm going to go through everything, all of these 14 beads once more, and then we'll tie the knot. Enough there. Bring that through, pull that tight, and put that in there, and pull it tight, and we're going to do one more knot. Like that. And just pull that, make sure it's tight. And we're going to clip the tail. And then we're going to go through to the other side and we'll pull that little knot in one of the beads here. So we'll just go through a few. And go 
there it's hidden we'll go through a few more just so that the knots at the opposite end and there's our first loop okay so now what we're going to do is we're going to pick up two 11 O's. We're coming out of this bead here. So we're going to go through the other side of that same bead. Like that. Pull that through. Then we're going to go through the first bead that we added on. Like that. And we're going to go through the second bead that we added on in the same direction like that. Then we're going to pick up one seed bead and we're going to come down through the bottom bead next to the one we went through. So right in through here like that. and go through the top of that bead. So we're basically actually I don't think we have to go through. It's been a few weeks since I went through. I think we can leave that one like that. Now we're going to pick up two. So I apologize for that. I do so many different tutorials and watch so many videos and I forget. You know, I think we do have to go through that one. I think what it is, is it should pull it closer to that, like that there. So yeah, we did have to go through. Now we'll pick up two. And we're going to go through the next bead, so this third one here, like that. And it's going to line it up perfect. Then we're going to go through this first bead to secure it to the bottom row, just like that. And that's what the one component looks like. So now, we're going to make another loop instead of 14 because we already have three beads set up here. These two side ones are kind of embellishment to separate the two loops. So we have three here. So we only need 11 seed beads to add to our. Let me count here. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And 11. So we're coming out this side. We're going to go in through this side. And go through all three of those beads. Like that. There we go. Now we're going to go through seven beads here. Do four and three. And three. Didn't realize this piece has been damaged. Hopefully it won't affect it. Okay, so we're going to pick up two. Let's move these over here. One. Two eleven O's. We are going to go around this side. Like that. And we're going to go through that first one. Right there. And then go through the second one. Like that. Pick up one eleven O. And I think go 
go through this side here, see if that makes a difference. Awesome, yeah. And then go through that one. Pick up two. Eleven O's. And that there. And then go through that first one that you just added on. And there you go. You are ready for your 11, 11, 11 O's. <laughs> Two, three, four, five, six, seven, We're coming out this side we're going to go in through this side and this is our last loop so the earrings are super easy it's only three loops so just like that I'm just gonna... the this middle one is a bit loose oh, well. Let's see if I can Tighten that a bit. Okay, so now we need to go through and we're going to tie this off. Actually, I might go down through this one to tighten this one as well. So let's go through here, through all of them. Come down here. So I hope everybody's having a wonderful summer. Things are starting to get back to normal, so it's always nice. The weather is nice. I heard Florida had a terrible storm. It hit some of the southern states. Let's go through here and put a knot. And we're going to go through here and we're going to go around the other side and create a knot to tighten that. And that would in reinforce that spot that was the thread was a bit bare. Let's go through all of these here. Tighten this. Let's go through here and put a knot, and that should do it. That. So yeah, I had lots of thread, so that's good. And we will just put our tail through here and we will tighten this knot into that bead I think we can get it in there 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 that's better okay just clip this and there's our Three, so we can do our earrings. So let's put these away. And we'll pull these out. 
I need them and we need our pearls. So let's put these guys there. We'll just hang on to this for now. So these are the pearls that I got at, oh, I forget the name of it, of the store. It's a Canadian shop. How could I forget? Might put a few there. Now, what do we need to do? So now I'm going to switch from the six pound fire line. So when you're doing this, you don't need something really strong. But when you're attaching your pearls together, you do need something stronger because they're heavy. So you want to make sure that they hold on well. So let's take some of this 10 pound. And I don't think we need a very long strand. So, oops. ah, we need a silver bead to put at the top and the bottom. And I have these lovely metal beads that I got. You know, everything's blurring together, so I apologize. It was in an unboxing. So let me two, four. It's getting harder and harder to remember where I got things. It's all kind of <laughs> melding together. Okay, so for this first one, we need to pick up one of these little beads and we're going to bring it down to the middle of your 10 pound fire line so find the middle like that then you're going to take both strands and you're going to put it through your first pearl now the color pearl doesn't really matter right now but you want to make sure you keep it consistent with your bracelet so Say you start with a blue, a dark blue, then a light blue, I would do the same for the other earring in particular. It's not really going to matter for your bracelet, although you probably want to keep it consistent. If you see, you know, I started with a dark, with a blue and then a, a, a gold on those. So let's go ahead and do dark blue. Pull that all the way down, and there is what you have. So now you are going to pick up your beading, and you are going to go through the first loop. And that's what it's going to look like, the first loop. So now you're going to pick up your light blue, and you're only going to put it through one strand. And then grab your two ends and draw that down to the bottom. And that's what it looks like. I'll show you like that. So now what you're going to do is you're going to take both strands and put it through the next loop. Like that. And pull it tight. Oh, these are going to be pretty. Very nice. Okay. So now you have to pay attention which strand you're using. Because we're going to add a dark blue, it's coming out. You can see the thread is right there. So you want to use that thread to thread on your next dark blue. So let's pick up a dark blue, thread that on. And that's what it looks like. Now you're going to take both ends and you're going to put it through the last loop. 
like that. So it's starting to come together. And you can kind of turn your beads a bit. Now we are going to pick up the lower strand, which is coming out of the blue. So it's this one here. And we are going to put the light blue on there. This one. Actually, you can put both strands through now that I... Actually, that solves the problem. Let me see if we can do that. If we could put both strands through, if it doesn't mess up the way the beads show. And then we don't have to add seed beads. 50 nose. So let's try both. See what happens. Yeah, that worked. Here we go. So we don't need the... Yep, we don't need the 50 nose. Problem solved. Okay, now we're going to take and put one of these little metallic beads both strands through and that's going to secure our final bead like that okay so we need our um, clamshells so let me so we need two clamshells for this and we need two for the bracelets And we need some crimp beads. And I'm using these little ones because they fit inside the clamshells really well. So let's thread on our clamshell through both strands. Like that. And we are going to pull it down tight. Now we're going to put our stop bead on. I'm wondering if I can... I was going to put a knot there, but the hole is big enough in the clamshell that the knot would pass right through. I want to get the clamshell as close and tight to hold these beads together. But we'll try it with the crimp bead. Put both strands through. Now I'm going to separate them and create a knot and that will hold it tight. So I'll do the first knot. Like that. Yeah, we'll do the second knot. There, that's holding it nice and tight. So now, I think I'm going to do a third knot that those knots are kind of passing through that crimp bead. Now, just hold on to that and we will tighten, close that crimp bead. show you this there so that's uh, mash down there looks pretty good and we will just want to make sure everything's okay so that no nothing's coming out of there so we can actually clip this these little tails and then we will close that there and there we go that is how easy these guys are so let's get a so I add a jump ring 
the speed I want to turn a bit. So I want my earrings to sit this way. If you want your earrings to sit that way or that way, you can just add your earring wire directly to your clamshell. But because I want it to sit sideways, I need to change the orientation. So I'm going to add a jump ring. That's one, two, my other pliers. Put that on like that. And put our ear wire on as well. There. Get into that. Wow, these are really nice. Oh my gosh. Look at that. That is pretty. Okay, let's do the next one. So we need another piece of 10 pound. one of these little metallic beads and find both strands so we can get the middle and remember that we started with the dark blue pearl so let's do this again so I also um, you know when I bought these pearls I did a, some research on a bunch of um, designs for pearls and you know I just ended up getting distracted with other designs and other beads and stuff like that so I am getting back to that so I'm just we're going to add our beads beaded chain loops and we need a light pearl light blue pearl so just just be aware I'm getting ready to do a bunch of pearl necklaces and bracelets and fun stuff. I find with the pearl designs a lot of them are very similar and just involve say different colors and how to put them on a bracelet. So, um, you know, I don't want to bore you guys too much. Sometimes it happens, but, uh, you know, it's the way it is. It's, uh, yeah, my brain is just all over the place with different designs, so. You know what, uh, part of it too is I, I joke about being a squirrel because my, and we're going to put everything through this strand, my, um, my brain, I just jump from one idea to the next. So that's why if you see me do an unboxing and then I do a bunch of videos with those beads and then it's like all of a sudden nothing with those beads, it's because I've moved on to another idea. So I apologize for that. If you have specific, um, things you want to see let me know I'll see what I can do if it's something I know how to do or if something I feel like I want to challenge myself with I will definitely okay we're going to do what we did on the other one is we're going to put both strands through the last bead I think 
if I put one strand through, it would orient the holes of the pearls a little better. But you know what? For, again, the distance that you're going to see this at, you're not going to notice. And this way you don't have that extra strand. So then we're going to put one of these silver metallic beads. I think I got these metallic beads at the Panda Hall store on AliExpress. So that's the other thing, because my brain is so squirrely, I forget where I get things and then I'm like, when I calm down and start just relaxing and beating, then I remember, oh yeah, that's where I got them. Uh, and the pearls were from butterfly beads. Uh, I knew I would, it would come to me. So now we're going to go through the bottom of the clamshell with both strands. Let's put that on. And then one of these crimp beads through both strands. Pull that down and we're going to create a few knots to get it so that it's nice and tight. And like that. And again. Tight. We're going to do a third just to be sure in there. That, let's take a look. That looks good. I'm going to hang on to those threads while I crimp this crimp bead. that a bit. There. So the knots went down in that crimp bead, so I am going to put a few other knots to make sure it's on the opposite side of that crimp. is not going anywhere there take a look can see so now we can cut this Put it there and squeeze that. That one is nice and soft. So you can see how this one here is not, and that's because we didn't cinch that one strand, but you can kind of just turn it a bit and then it's fine. And again, you're not going to see that, especially on the side. So I'll just make sure that's closed all the way. And we're going to put our jump ring. This, these are, um, these jump rings are 20 gauge. They're quite thick, so they're strong. And where's our ear wire? There. Oops. Oopsie. So yeah, you can see how this one sits going straight up. It should sit a little off to the side, but you know what? I, it's still beautiful. Okay, so let's do the bracelet. So we're going to use the same concept. So let's grab <coughs> some of these. You only need two. And we're going to need a whole bunch more pearls.
And where's that? Here, we are going to get a piece, but now we need a long piece of 10 pounds. Let's um, use this as our gauge. And probably a wing scan would do it. So our bracelet is going to go, this is, so we need a crimp bead. So for this one, because it's at the beginning, we can just put one side through. We don't have to put both pieces through because this will hang on to our thread. So I'm going to grab the other end and we're going to draw that down to the middle. So the placement of this one is just slightly different because basically our clam shell and this crimp bead is going to secure the end for us. So now we've got it down to the bottom like that so it's looped around and we're going to go through the top of the clam shell because we want that crimp bead to sit inside to secure it like that. like that. Then we want, don't necessarily have to put one of these on, but I will just to keep it consistent with the earrings. Like that. So I'm going to hold that tight and then I'm going to crimp that. Make sure that's crimped. Yeah. So we don't have to hold it tight. We can just crimp it this way because we'll pull that through. There we go. That's perfect. Okay. And so we can close this now. Now we need a dark blue, string both ends through, and then we grab our chain, put it through the first hole, and bring it all the way down like that. Then we're going to just take one strand and we're going to put a light blue on. And then we're going to take both strands, put it through the chain, through the next circle, like this. Put those two through the next one and pull it through and pull it tight do you know what these are the wrong sizes i was wondering why on these earrings the loops were kind of big like those loops should fit really tight let me see what i have here no it says eight millimeter they feel small i wonder if my 
seed beads are a little bigger. Okay, we'll continue with this. So now we need a blue, and so we're going to look in the strand that's coming out of the blue. That's the strand we want to string on. I'm going to set this one aside. Some of the finish has come off, so I want to keep this as nice as possible. So we'll put that down there. We'll grab the other end of this strand, the opposite strand. And we're going to put both of these through the next chain. So you are going to get some differences with different size beads. So I'll put it through the next loop. I need to get rid of my pliers so I'm getting hooked on the I probably have too much of this fire line. But I don't I don't want to take the chance of not having enough. So bring both strands tight. And you know, it actually, I wonder if this one I use, they, they seem, yeah, they're the same size. So it must be the seed beads. Let's turn that a bit. So there we go. So we'll keep going. So now we need a light blue, or sorry, dark blue. No, light blue. I was right. This is the opposite strand as well. So that's what you're going to maybe struggle with is which strand to pick. So just remember if you look at the strand that's going, that's the similar color, so on either side. Oops, show you. So then my next one will be a blue because it's coming through the blue. So we need to go through the the um, loop, the next circle, get both strands here. This part's a bit kind of fiddly, um, so it's, I apologize, it's a bit hard to show you on screen, and I, I think I might. Cut my thread a bit so that you don't see me putting through a whole bunch of stuff. Okay, so now we need a. Let's take a look. A light blue, so you pick that strand. Or, sorry, a dark blue. This one here at the bottom. Put the blue on. And grab both strands like that. Put it through the next one. Just hang on to that. See if we can get this. Tighten that. Grab the bottom strand. Make sure. I think ah, this is looped around. Let me see if I can fix this. There. That's better. So try and keep your strands going in one direction and not looping around. So now we need a light blue you can see how this really gets kind of messed up okay and go through the next loop keep everything from tangling tight and 
Use the bottom strand, a dark blue. So I'll just keep going like this. And I don't have a pause button on this tablet, so I can't pause it and come back to it. So you get to watch me <laughs> do this all the way through. Or fast forward. Hey, that's a good one. So it's the bottom strand, light blue. I think um, I, I've been watching different bead YouTubers and um, trying to get some ideas on how to create the videos. And I like the idea that Stephanie from Bronze Pony does every once in a while um, is she does like a mini and maybe it's some of her old videos she does a mini bracelet so she does just a short strand so you know I might consider doing that so that it's not so boring for you guys bring both pieces through that so I will be doing a um, a repeat of the mermaid scales uh, bracelet tutorial the original one that I did I was actually surprised I went back and looked at it and I was kind of surprised it was kind of all over the place with both physically like you see how I keep moving it up so it is a bit awkward doing this on camera so I apologize I try to make it seamless so that you can see everything that's going on but sometimes that's hard to do and I noticed in that video there was a lot of that. Now, part of that too with the mermaid scales is because I'm showing you parts of the bracelet. I'm trying to keep everything in the frame of the camera. And, uh, and I think about, you know, I was relatively new to doing stuff. So I wasn't as good as keeping everything in frame so I will do another one and try and make it as simple as possible I have considered actually doing an edited one but you would not believe the amount of time and effort it takes even if I were to just cut certain spots or even if I just did little clips of each part of the bracelet and then put them all together in a video the time that it takes to upload those things is incredible and the computer power and stuff so that's why I kind of like doing this a little more spontaneous where I can talk to you about stuff and show you the full thing but we'll see we'll see how that comes out and uh how to, you know, all of this is like evolving as I learn and figure things out. So, appreciate all your kind words and support. It uh, makes it a lot of fun to know there's other people that are interested in getting something out of it. This is beautiful, these two colors together with this silver.
So I've been, like I said, doing some research on different designs and different basic stitches that I haven't, I've seen the videos, but I haven't actually tried. So, um, chenille stitch is one of them that I'm looking at doing some stuff. But part of my research too is I will look up the basic part of that stitch and how to do it. And then I try to figure out a way to make it a little, um, a little more interesting. So whether that's the color of the beads or using a different type of bead, things like that. So that's something I'm looking forward to sharing with you guys. And we are getting close to, we should probably hit it this week, is 3,000 subscribers. So I will be doing a giveaway when that comes up. I'd like to do a live and I'd like to make lives a regular thing, but uh, with all the people working at home, oh, this strand didn't go. Okay, this is the one I need. Uh, with all the people working at home, the internet is bogged down and doing lives, it keeps buffering. So it's not, there's no point doing it. I did a half hour one and people couldn't follow it kept freezing on them and stuff so we're supposed to get an upgrade and we got an announcement i think they sent it in the mail saying they were upgrading the speed and stuff and never heard from them again so i have to get my wife to look into that So yeah, I'd love to do some lives and talk to you guys. And of course the garage sale is keeps getting closer and closer. I haven't set a date yet. I am just uh, a little hesitant about giving a date because um, there's a few other YouTubers that are doing sales and I don't want to interfere with their dates. So I will, um, I still have a bunch of things. I'm finishing up the mermaid scale bracelet kits. So I'm finishing those up and I have to photograph all the bead mixes that I've created. Um, I do have all the bracelets photographed and uploaded. There is 250 bracelets. I cannot believe. But you think, I have over 600 videos, and in each video there's at least one or two bracelets in the video. So it makes sense that there's that many. And so yeah, this... They're going to be, I'm going to be selling them between $5 and $20, most of them in the $5 range. So that's super fun that you can get some nice bracelets for $5. And a few people have asked how the garage sale works, and basically it's through the Facebook group, so you have to belong to the group. So if you've not requested to belong to the group yet and you're interested, by all means, if you go to my YouTube page at the top right hand corner, just below the kind of the long photograph that they have, it says um, Facebook group and you click on that and it will take you directly and you can request to become a member then i created an event in facebook so you say if you're going to that event or not 
and then I will post albums on Facebook and each album will be the bit specific bracelet. I, I've organized it by price of bracelets. So there's a $5 album and there's a, there's also another $5 album that's semi-precious stones on stretch bracelet with wooden beads are really, oh, I jumped ahead of myself here. These have to go through the loop. So yeah, once I will, the day of the sale, I will um, make those albums visible and you go through and you, there's a acronym, buy it now, I think, B-I-N, buy it now. And um, so you put that on there and then at the end of the sale, I will, you need to email me right away to let me know your home address and I will do a estimate of the shipping of all the items you've requested. And once I have a price for that, and the shipping should be relatively inexpensive. So the shipping will be between seven dollars and at the very most fifteen dollars but i can't imagine that you would have that much stuff that it would be in the fifteen dollar range and then you send me the money through paypal so pretty easy let me get these two strands together here through the next hole. We are almost done. Like that. Oh, coming along, look at that. Wow, this is pretty. Okay, we've got the dark blue. And then I ship it to you once I get the money. So again, this is the first time I've ever done this. Now I have sold stuff on through the YouTube channel and basically works the same way. People say what they want. They give me their address. I get an estimate of the, the cost for shipping and they send me the money. As soon as I get a notice from PayPal that the money's there, I send it to you. And that's it. And it takes about two weeks for the shipping. Okay, this one I kind of thought it was looped around the wrong way here. Let's see if I can get this. Sometimes if these strands overlap, it wraps around the previous bead. Let's put that one aside here and grab this one. Pull it through. Like that. Then take both these strands and put through the next loop, put everything tight. We need a dark blue. So I hope everybody's doing well. I know a lot of places are lifting restrictions now. A lot more people are vaccinated. We get our second shot in a week. I'm super excited about that. 
in the gyms, restaurants, the shipping. Gyms, restaurants, the stores are to full capacity. Well, not quite. I think they're at 50 right now, still 50% capacity in the stores here in Nova Scotia. Because we had a huge bump in cases that was totally unexpected. Okay, so we need a blue. Actually, we're going to do what we did with the earrings. We're going to put both strands through the last pearl. There. So if you, because the strands are kind of zigzagging, these pearls get a bit loose so make sure you kind of go through and draw them all down and draw that tight so now we need a silver metallic bead like that pass that through and we are going to go through the bottom of our clamshell Kind of like what we did on the earrings. Pull that down. And we need a crimp bead. Pull it down. And for this one, I am going to do the same. So again, look, I, I had tons of line. So in case you're wondering how much line you actually need. So for this, I'm going to do the same as what I did because I want this nice and tight. So I'm going to create knots. Cinch it down. There. Okay, so those knots would pop through that crimp bead, but let's see if we can get this crimped before it does that. And this is the hard part because it's kind of narrow in here. Squeeze that down. That worked really well. Make sure both sides are mushed down. And you can kind of open your clamshell a bit better than that. So there is a bit of wiggle room, but let's see if we can. Tie a knot in here. This doesn't go anywhere. And another knot. I'm going to do one more knot. It looks like it's secure, but I just want to make sure that in there good. And I'm going to cut this off. And close that. And tighten that there. Now we've got our, oh, this is looking really nice. So I had pulled out these crimp beads. I'm, I'm kind of like, I, I would like it if the, these clamshells looked a little nicer. So I'd have to do a search, but I thought I could probably cover them, but it actually is too, these crimp tubes are not big enough to cover them completely so we won't use that but so let's put a bigger jump ring on these guys 
and we want something that's strong. Let me see about these guys. I wonder if a smaller I think I'm going to try a smaller one and the original ones that I had were nice and tight these ones are 20 gauge, I think. Let's try these ones. I think they're the ones we used on the earrings. They're nice and strong. Hopefully that will fit. Hopefully it'll fit over this big loop of a jump ring. Oh yeah, this is awesome. That, oh yeah, that's better. So it's really strong. Okay, let's do this one. those two holes. Let's see if we can get this guy. There's no hole in this one. That is weird. There is no hole on that side. I'm I'm stunned. I've never seen that happen. Okay, well, I think I have one more of those. Ooh, I do. Thank goodness. Look at this is the last one. I've never had that happen. Through the you can see the holes. There is no hole on that one at all. sure these are in the right orientation okay sometimes if the magnet is flipped the other way it will repel instead of so always check before you attach it that's interesting and you know what that is from a set that I actually returned I bought it on Amazon and it was a bunch of them and when I got them I had since found them somewhere else like half the price and because I had ordered a set of a hundred it was you know I paid I think twenty six dollars and then I found it somewhere else for thirteen from actually the same company get this so it was I think it was the Panda Hall store on AliExpress and you could get like a hundred of them for thirteen dollars and I but I had ordered them on Amazon for $26. You know, $26 for 100 magnets is not too bad. But then when you see the same store is selling it for uh, half the price. Oh, this, this turned out really nice. Wow. So there you go. There is the lovely goddess bracelet. And let's bring out the earrings. These are, let's do it this way here so I can, oh, let me um, bring this out a bit. 
There's the earrings. So there you go. Thanks for joining me. I hope you enjoyed that. It wasn't too, you know, repetitive. And uh, but you know, it just shows you can. These are so simple. Once you figure out how to do these chains, it's so relaxing to make them. They're so quick. You would think thirty is a lot. But you know what? It goes by like you can do it sitting maybe half hour to an hour sitting watching TV with your bead tray. And um, definitely the earrings are super easy. They're only three strands. And look at how gorgeous these are. So here's the other set. Let me show both sets. So we'll try and make a bunch of these in... Uh, Maybe what I'll do in the next video like this is I'll do a bunch of different colorways, but we'll just do one earring of each set so that you get an idea of, you know, if you didn't watch the original video. And let's bring that out a bit so you can see. There you go. So <laughs> thanks for joining me and we'll see you in the next video and hopefully soon for the garage sale. Get that going and some lives and giveaways and lots of fun stuff. So take care and we'll see you again. Bye for now.